Antarctica is already one of Earth's weirdest places. For a start, it's technically the planet's largest desert, despite being made of water. That's because a desert is defined by how much or how little rainfall it gets, but it doesn't make this fact any less odd. We also didn't officially discover Antarctica until 1820. In fact, it's the only part of the world that was truly discovered in thousands of years, since there were no people living there when the first Russian Antarctic expedition sighted an ice shelf. Its existence was theorized for centuries, however, and it can be seen on many Renaissance-era maps as the fictional continent Terra Australis. The idea was that since the Arctic Circle existed, an opposite of the Arctic Circle should also exist. It wasn't until the very end of the 19th century that anybody actually set foot on the Antarctic landmass, however. But exploring Antarctica has continued to be difficult. Even today, some of the most famous people to try have also died there. In the early 1910s, Captain Robert Scott led Britain's Nova expedition to the South Pole, hoping to be the first. While they reached it, they discovered that Roald Amundsen's Norwegian expedition had beaten them by five weeks. On the return journey, Scott's entire party perished in the tundra. The body of one of the crew's most famous members, Captain Oates, was never found. But the Terra Nova expedition's purpose wasn't only to achieve the superhuman feat of reaching the South Pole. Many scientists also went to Antarctica on the ship and weren't part of Scott's expeditionary party. They brought back a wealth of research. Today, over a century after Terra Nova, Antarctica remains a place of limitless scientific discovery. Many of the people who worked there in one or two year stints are scientists conducting research. The Antarctic Treaty, signed in 1959, reserved Antarctica for scientific study. And it's not just planet Earth that Antarctica researchers are interested in. We're using it to answer many questions about outer space, too. Antarctica is home to the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory, which has detected dozens of neutrinos that probably originated from outside the solar system. Ice Cube has thousands of sensors embedded in the Antarctic ice, all looking for neutrinos. Neutrinos are also known as ghost particles because, thanks to their neutral charge, they almost never interact with physical matter. That's what makes them so hard to detect. Some of the neutrinos we have detected have behaved unusually seemingly originating from inside the Antarctic ice. This was widely reported in 2020 as evidence of a parallel universe, but what it actually implies isn't that there's an extra-dimensional portal down there, but that Antarctic ice has such strange properties it can affect these neutrinos in ways we don't fully understand. It's not just neutrinos that Ice Cube is looking for either. The observatory has also provided invaluable research into high-energy cosmic rays and one of the universe's most elusive substances, dark matter. Ice is useful in discovering neutrinos thanks to something called Cherenkov radiation. While nothing can surpass the speed of light in a vacuum, light does slow down while passing through other objects. In particular, water and ice slow photons significantly. The speed of light through a vacuum is about 186,000 miles per second, but through water, it's roughly 140,000 miles per second. When a charged particle travels through a medium like water faster than light does, it produces Cherenkov radiation, a blue glow. Think of it like a sonic boom which occurs when an object breaks the speed of sound. But in this case, it's a particle breaking the relative speed of light. How do neutrinos come into it? Well, neutrinos interact with molecules of water in ice to create such fast-traveling particles. Having said that, this still doesn't explain the strange angles Ice Cube's neutrinos have often appeared from. Ice Cube also has the potential to indirectly detect dark matter. 
Dark matter, by its very nature, is impossible to detect directly, as it doesn't interact with normal matter. But Ice Cube can try and detect the decay of dark matter as it interacts with the sun. This decay produces, once again, neutrinos, the thing Ice Cube is designed to look for. So, Antarctica holds many cosmic answers in its ice sheets. Something else Antarctica has in common with the wider universe are its subsurface lakes and oceans. Despite Antarctica's cold temperatures, large bodies of water do exist inside the ice sheet itself. This happens because of the pressure deep down. Due to the weight of the ice, the water down there isn't actually able to freeze as it's being so compressed. The largest we know of is Lake Vostok, Earth's sixth largest lake, and it's completely hidden beneath the ice sheet. Aside from this huge lake, there are over a hundred more, all draining into the sea. All kinds of things could be happening inside the ice sheet with these under ice water systems. The reason this is so intriguing is that it's a window into the world of interplanetary subsurface oceans. Europa, Enceladus, and even Titan are all alien moons inside our system that famously have subsurface oceans. These oceans could be home to alien ecosystems, and studying Antarctica's lakes will prepare us for exploring them one day. Remarkably, we didn't even know Antarctica had this secret until the 2000s, when it was discovered accidentally by scientists studying the ice sheet's ever-changing topography. The ice sheet also holds the long-lost remains of an ancient supercontinent, giving us a window into hundreds of millions of years of Earth's geological history. Perhaps most amazingly of all, scientists have found evidence of life deep inside the ice sheet that shouldn't be able to exist. It's true that Antarctica has lots of unique wildlife, famously including its many species of penguin. But penguins don't live 3,000 feet below the surface of the ice. Scientists drill down to take images of the conditions in the Antarctic underworld and found strange, sponge-like organisms. Much like with the subsurface lakes, scientists weren't expecting to make this discovery. They were trying to take readings from the seabed and just stumbled across these creatures. There are sponges and creatures on stalks that look almost like mushrooms, and they've been living there in sub-zero temperatures and total darkness for an untold amount of time. This is really extraordinary, and if you ever wanted evidence that life can form in the icy wilds of Europa and Titan, this is it. If it can happen down here, in one of planet Earth's most inhospitable environments, then it can absolutely happen on an alien moon. However, these discoveries aren't completely without cause for concern. There have been many stories in science fiction of strange, dangerous creatures living in the Antarctic, from alien life forms to primordial pathogens. On the other side of the world, in the Arctic Circle, the town of Longyearbyen in Norway is famous for supposedly forbidding its residents to die. Now, this isn't really true, but what is true is that nobody is allowed to be buried there in a coffin. That's because it's too cold there for bodies to decompose. What makes this alarming is the presence in the local cemetery of the 1918 Spanish flu, which killed millions of people around the world. It's inactive. But the idea of long-buried viruses lurking beneath the ice is still a chilling one. Fortunately, since so few humans have actually been to Antarctica, it's unlikely that there's anything deadly to humans there. Having said that, it has been claimed that the opposite is true, that Antarctica's noble emperor penguins are at risk of catching human diseases if we continue visiting and interacting with them. Not only does Antarctica hold the answers to some of Earth's greatest mysteries, but some of the greatest mysteries in the entire universe. And they're just waiting for us to come along and solve them. And that's what's really under the